I don't know about you, but I thought 2019 was a pretty stellar year for music, so when it came time to make my Albums of the Year list in December, I wasn't quite sure what I'd put at number one. I originally intended to have my list be largely unordered numerically, but at the end of the day, I realized there sort of had to be one album at the top of the pile. Bon Iver's I, I was a pretty surefire lock as the album I listened to the most by far last year. Tom York's dystopian Fever Dream Anima was another close contender, but at the end of the day, no other album defined 2019 for me like Crush, Sam Shepard's second full length under the Floating Points name. Boring contextual stuff out of the way first. Floating Points is the recording pseudonym of London electronic musician and general whiz Sam Shepard. Shepard began the project in the late 2000s. His early singles like Vacuum Boogie and J&W Beat carved out a niche in house and club music with winding structure and funky, heady psychedelia. Alongside contemporaries like Fortet, Ben UFO, and Daphne, he made a name for himself with a focus on textured synth sounds and ever-shuffling drum lines, as well as his iconic DJ sets. He quickly rose the ranks of electronic music, and as the reach of his project grew, the music became increasingly stately, mature, measured, and you could be forgiven for saying held back. Though in my opinion, the quality only rose as time went on, the shift from tracks like Marilyn to ARP3 to King Bromeliad is palpable. The sounds became neater, more hemmed in, just as lively but a little less brash. This evolution culminated in his 2015 debut album, Elania. Elania is something of an oddity in Shepard's discography, 43 minutes of free-flowing ambient music, Talk Talk inspired progressive post-rock, and astral jazz. His touch, his unmistakable style is still there in spades, but it's a hard break from everything else he's ever released. It's utterly fantastic in every way, but it put the Floating Points project in a weird spot. Even though Elania stands as one of my personal favorite albums ever, it left me wondering, where will he go next? Elania was the product of intense scrutiny and studio tinkering. It took Shepard seven years to make, amidst a busy schedule of DJ sets and PhD work, and he spent over two years touring it, additionally recording an album of live jams and an accompanying concert film with the touring band. Its follow-up took a bit less time. In the spring of 2017, some friends of Shepard's who have a little band called The XX asked him to come open for them on tour. He brought nothing but his Buchla synthesizer and a Korg sequencer, and every night freestyled 30 minutes of what he's called some of the most obtuse and aggressive music of his career to crowds of 20,000. Inspired by the vitality he reaped from those dates, the difficulty and excitement of his new studio rig, and the grim state of affairs currently unfolding across the world, but specifically in his home country of Great Britain, he hunkered down in the studio without much of a roadmap and emerged five weeks later with Crush. Shepard's second album is a sheer departure, both from the club music of Floating Point's nascency and the horizon-scanning explorations of Elania in favor of stark, chilly IDM. It's totally new territory for the Floating Points project, and the results of that change are immensely satisfying. One of the main draws of Crush is its singular vision, the intensely unique character that runs through every beat of the record. It shares sonic palettes with a lot of music, like some of the recent Aphex Twin material, certainly, but no other album in 2019 sounded anything like Crush. Much like its predecessor, you can hear Shepard's attention to detail, his brand of melody writing, and the je ne sais pas that makes all his output distinctly floating points is still there, but everything around them has totally changed. An important part of this is the noticeable push and pull that happens throughout the album. Crush isn't a full onslaught. Rather, it functions as something of a pendulum swing. On one hand, there's the somber ambient cuts. Songs like Requiem for CS70 and Strings and Sea Watch are quiet and contemplative. Their mix is sparse with sounds, but full to bursting with melancholic frustration. Synthesizer solo Birth is a chilling beauty, keyboard melodies fluttering with tasteful effects and heavy emotional overtones. These more ruminant tracks gesture towards some of Elania's ambient moments, but they still feel thoroughly rooted in the moods and tone of Crush, of a piece with its distinct new direction. On the other hand, there's the intense IDM odysseys. Last Bloom is a subtly building banger, fraught with anxiety and constantly shifting drums. Anisic Modular is downright awe-inspiring, overwhelming walls of synthesizer and a gnarled rhythm forming the most gorgeous song of Shepard's career. And on midpoint highlights bias and environments, the music reaches snarling ferocity, using blistering dance floor drums and frenetic lead melodies to create a feeling that Shepard's music never has before. Menace. Every moment of Crush is visceral and exciting, as you never know what new sounds are around the next dark corner. I really want to emphasize that point, 
that the music is visceral and exciting. Where Shepard previously seemed comfortable in making his music more and more well-groomed as time went on, the music on Crush is wild, chaotic, unhinged even. It's invigorating to hear such bold sounds coming from Shepard since. Every song on Crush was made start to finish in barely over a month, a very quick turnover rate for any album, and one that's absolutely unprecedented for floating points. The material here sounds exactly like the result of five weeks of pure studio dynamism, of a supremely talented musician getting into the zone and letting loose with every tool at his disposal. Even though it's very well organized, Crush is possibly the most blood-pumping IDM album of the decade. The songs are structurally sound, but despite their literal beat-by-beat -beat rigidity, they feel loose, improvisational, and animalistic in all the best ways. And in purely sonic terms, this is uncharted territory for floating points. Shepard's wild studio rig imbues the music on Crush with a character that nothing else this year sounds remotely like. The Rhodes chroma that plays many lead melodies and other important figures in the music doesn't have any of its presets saved to the internal memory. Shepard made his own. Not only does it all sound fantastic and fresh, there is an intense dedication to studio craft, textures, and the jigsaw puzzle of a well-made electronic song that brings another level of satisfaction to the wild-eyed, caution-to-the-wind experimentation. This craftsmanship is at the forefront on opener fillets, where Shepard takes a massive ensemble of musicians and filters them through his synthesizers, natural instrumental textures contorted through a series of aggressive oscillations that distort their orchestral forms into something beastly. It also serves as a clear thematic tone setting for the record. In an interview with Resident Advisor, Shepard said about the track, The idea for that tune was to treat acoustic instruments like oscillators from a synth. I wanted to start with something that was very organic, but then quite quickly destroy it by processing it. Much of the album functions on this same logic. Indeed, Crush's title is appropriate. It takes a variety of traditional ideas about music that keen-eared fans will be able to pick out as shepherds and pulverizes them, twists them into barely recognizable shapes, and nearly destroys them altogether. Crush also contains some of the most politically charged instrumental music in recent memory. Shepard has spoken at length about his immense frustration with Brexit, the punditry and bigotry driving the whole ugly machine, as well as pressing issues affecting marginalized groups, like the mounting anti-refugee sentiment in the UK. Sea Watch was directly inspired by the Refugee Rescue Outreach Group of the same name, and the song carries a clearly felt sense of dreadful longing for justice, subtly whirring synth sounds paralleling a sputtering flame of hope in a gale of resignation. That frustration over socio-political injustices manifests in another big way as well. Beyond the straightforward intensity of the previously discussed bangers, much of the music bears the scars of struggle. The flow of the album, and indeed the internal movement of songs themselves, sounds like a ceaseless battle. Shuddering rhythms constantly threaten to stress fracture, and sometimes, like at the end of Anisic Modular, they break entirely. It often feels as if the music itself is struggling, fighting against some outside force that threatens to violently tear it apart at every second. Shepard's anger about the state of his home country is felt fully. Crush is full of a smoldering rage that's new to his wheelhouse, and adds hugely to the dark, visceral feel of the record. Crush was my favorite album of last year because of all of these things, but also because it felt very timely. At the tail end of a decade largely dominated by fear, it felt like the perfect reminder not to give up the fight just yet. It serves as a fantastic album on its own, but also as a kick in the teeth to fascist regimes and personal resignation. It was the perfect way to close out the 2010s and one of my favorite albums in many years. Alright, so that's going to do it for today's video. Um, I'm not going to make any commitments about when I'll be uploading because we know how that went the last time. I want to be getting one piece of content out a week. I feel like that's a feasible goal. But starting now, you should see more content from me pretty regularly. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you in the next one.